We all want more from life. We all want what we can call success. We want spiritual growth, connection to Hashem, connection to God. We want intellectual expansion. We want to become emotionally vibrant. We want to become physically vibrant. We want physical energy, physical vitality, physical health. We want incredible relationships, incredible marriages, incredible network. We want to financial growth, financial success. We want impact. We want purpose. We want meaning. Everyone wants that. The question is, how much do you want it? Most people, they want it. They have New Year's resolutions, LO resolutions. We all want the same things primarily. But most people don't achieve it. And the reason is because you can't just want it. You have to need it. Right? You need to breathe. You can't live without breathing. And most people think they can live without living. They can live without devoting their entire life to truth, to purpose, to achieving their unique purpose, to actually maximizing their time. Most people, they have moments of inspiration. When we come to these retreats, we have moments of like, what would my life be like if I actually stopped doing the things that I've been doing for the past 10, 20, 30, 40 years and started actually taking myself seriously? Start actually utilizing my time. Start expanding and saying that, you know, it's not just that person on stage who's devoting their life to greatness. What if I devoted my life to something more? Am I really giving it my all? And you know what? It gets at the fundamental question of what is greatness? What is greatness? And part of the reason why people aren't striving for greatness is because we don't really know what it is. And I became obsessed with this question. What, is, what, what differentiates the greats from everyone else? What is it that makes this person different from that person? Why are the people who are CEOs, world leaders, rabbis, educators, people who are transforming, or what makes them different? Do they think differently? Do they have a different philosophy? Are they born into a different world, into a different family? What is it? And can I do it? Now, I just want to briefly share a little bit of my story and why I became obsessed with this. Because when I was in high school, I was not obsessed with this. When I was in high school, I was a normal kid. And Baruch Hashem now, I'm blessed to speak, to educate, to write, to teach, to write a book, to run a business, to coach leaders, CEOs, entrepreneurs, business owners, and help them achieve greatness. But when I was a kid, I just wanted to fit in. I wanted to be normal, and then my life fell apart. When I was around 17, 18 years old, I went to study in Israel for a couple years, and my whole worldview, my whole life, everything shattered. It started where I lost the ability to speak. I was falling in love with Torah, falling in love with God, falling in love with Hashem. I wanted to talk about Torah, and I couldn't speak. Every time I tried to say a word, it felt like a dagger was stabbing my throat. It's horrible. I had to measure every single word I said. And then I got my heart broken. Existentially, my whole identity shattered. But then my life really fell apart. <laughs> I remember walking just a regular day and I felt the shooting pain in my stomach. And then that pain shot to my head and I passed out. Now by raise of hands, who's ever passed out before? It's not so bad, you wake up. I didn't. I felt this existential struggle to come back to consciousness. It was like this nightmare where I didn't know if I was awake or not awake, if I was alive or not alive. I literally felt like I was dying and I didn't know what was happening and I wasn't yet awake and then I became awake and I literally thought that I had a near-death experience. I thought I was on the brink of death. I went to the doctors. They had no idea what was happening. And I had no idea what was happening. I thought it was a fluke accident. I ate something, something happened, whatever. Happened the next week. Then it happened two weeks later. And this started happening all the time. And every single time I thought I was going to die. And I'm a kid. I'm 18 years old. And I started crying out to Hashem, crying out to God, saying, like, why are you doing this to me? I'm not a bad guy. Like, I'm just trying to live my life. What do you want from me? But then I started to ask myself real questions because I had never asked myself what I was living for. And because every single day I thought this might be my last day, I said, what am I using my time here for with, with whatever time I have left what am I doing with my life and I had a midlife crisis at 18 I started saying what's my purpose why am I here what can I do what have I done what will I do if I actually took myself seriously if I actually devoted my time to becoming whatever it is I could become what is that 
what can I become? And I started to seek out Rebbeim and leaders and teachers. I started to interview CEOs and leaders and entrepreneurs and people. Anyone who's making a difference, I would talk to them. I started to get educated. After I got my BA, I got smicha, rabbinic ordination from NYU. I got a master's in education, a master's in Jewish thought. I studied at Harvard. I'm getting a PhD in the University of Chicago. Got certified as a coach. I tried to seek out everything and everyone that I can possibly utilize to figure out what greatness is. What's the path? What are the principles? What are the ideas? Not just tactics and strategies. What's the underlying philosophy of life? How do I become the biggest Tom and Chacham, the biggest tourist age I can become? How do I actually find out what I'm capable of and how do I help others do the same?